This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Warrenville City Council regular meeting for May 18th, 2020. A reminder that this meeting will be entirely via electronic means and not at City Hall. Um, could I have the roll call, please? Alderman Eschauer? Here. Alderman Berry? Here. Alderman Zedir? Here. Alderman Davalos? Here. Alderman Goodman? Here. Here. Alderman Kreschel? Here. Alderman Widener? Here. Alderman Wilson? Here. Thank you, Emily. Now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance as we've done uh, for the past few meetings. I will say it out loud and ask you to follow uh, silently with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now move on to our uh, portion of the meeting that we have citizens' comments. Do we have any that have registered by email? We do not. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak, uh, please announce yourself with your name and address. Please, please speak slowly and clearly so we can capture your information. And once we have uh, everyone wishing to speak, I will call on you one by one to proceed with your comments. So do we have anyone from the public that wishes to speak this evening? Okay. We'll move on into official and staff comments. A couple of things for me to begin with. Um, as you can plainly see, I desperately need a haircut and uh, we can't get to phase three quick enough to suit me. So um, I'm sure I'm not alone out there. Also a reminder that we have already started the Mayor's Fitness Challenge. We're into it for a couple of days. It goes until July 4th. I invite you to join me. It's very easy to sign up uh, if you go to the city website. It's an opportunity to get a little more activity in your life, whatever you choose to do, um, and solitary activity. If you need to get out of the house and you need to walk the trails or go for a bike ride, it's a, it's a good opportunity to get some minutes in and uh, have a little friendly competition with me and the other citizens. So um, check it out and join us, please. That's all I have for this evening. City Clerk. I would like to congratulate the class of 2020 and look forward to seeing some of their faces somewhere around town at some point in time. Um, we do have a uh, sign up on the Batavia and Butterfield Road, so congratulations. I know this is an unusual one, but you'll be fine. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Treasurer. No report. Thank you, Larry. Um, we'll go to the alderman now and we'll do as we've done in the past to make sure that everyone has the opportunity. I'll just go through the names and give you an opportunity to say something if you have something you wish to share at this point in the meeting. Beginning with Alderman Ashour. Hi everybody, it's good to see you all. Um, just a comment about the operation on the dam. It would seem based on the operating plan that the uh, county posted that they have We'll put more water into Warrenville than they should have, that they did not um, follow the plan and leave the gates open as long as they should, uh, which impounded more water here and caused more flooding than it should have. And it's something that we should address, I suppose, through staff and maybe write a letter to the county about. Thank you. We've already got that to staff and they're taking a look at it and they'll get back to us. Thank you. Alderman Berry. No comment. Thank you, Alderman Bevere. Yeah, I'll just uh, make a comment on the dam. Um, I did talk to Chris Vonamey and uh, told him that I'd like to see the verbiage uh, because the way I read it, the gate should be moved back down to the four foot opening. And uh, I told him I'd like to see it come up on a council meeting. So hopefully staff's working on that and uh, that's that's about it. I, if anybody wants to know times and dates and rainfall, I can get all that for them if they need it. Thank you, Fred. Alderman Davalos? Uh, no comment tonight. Thank you. Alderman Goodman? Just wanted to tell everybody that uh, I think it's exciting that the Public Works is doing a parade on the 20th at 1 o'clock, and I, I hope that we all have a 
chance, although it is in the afternoon, so not everybody's available, but I hope we all have a chance to go see that, uh, you know, well-spaced apart. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Krishal? Uh, nothing to add tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Widener? I have nothing to add, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Wilson? Uh, nothing to add tonight. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, we'll move on then to the city administrator. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up. Um, staff will be reaching out to some of the aldermen that are involved with some of the special work groups. Um, and our finance director, Dahlstrom, had, had spoken uh, earlier this week with Alderman Goodman and good reminder that we need to find ways to start working on things like the fund balance work group and the uh, enterprise maintenance and replacement uh, fund work group. So we'll be reaching out, trying to figure out times that we can meet, probably virtually, but uh, we'll be following up. So we haven't forgotten those things. We just have a lot on our plate and we'll figure out how to do them without, probably without being in person, but just FYI to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, John. City Attorney, Brooke? No report tonight. Thank you. We'll move in, uh, on to the next item in the agenda, then the approval of the agenda for this evening. Alderman Widener, would you like to make a motion? Uh, yes, I move to approve the agenda for the May 18th, 2020 City Council regular meeting. Second, Alderman Davalos. Okay, um, I will go through the list again to make sure uh, there isn't someone who wants to take something off the consent agenda. Alderman Eschauer? I'd like to remove 6A. Okay. Alderman Berry? Aye. No. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Do you have any? Okay. Do you wish to amend the agenda? No. No comment. Okay. On that. Thank you, Alderman Bevere. Do you wish to amend the agenda? Uh, nothing right now. Nothing. Okay. No changes. Okay. Good, Alderman Davalos. No, thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Alderman Goodman. No changes. Thank you, Alderman Krishal. Uh, no changes. Thank you, Alderman Widener. No changes, and as a motioner, I agree to the removal of item A from the agenda. Good, thank you. Discussion. And the seconder also agree? Is Who's that me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Alderman oh, Davalos. Okay. Yes, I agree. Thank you, and then Alderman Wilson. No changes. Very good. So the agenda has been altered, uh, amended this evening to take off item 6A. Um, so all in favor of the agenda as amended, we'll go back to the list. Alderman Ashauer? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. And Alderman Wilson? Aye. Thank you. The agenda as amended has been approved. I will proceed with reading it right now. I'll no minutes. Minutes. Oh. You're, you're stealing my job. Taking your job. Yeah. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. We have uh, one set of minutes that need approval also. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion for the approval of those minutes. Alderman Widener? I move to approve the minutes of the May 4th 2020 City Council regular meeting. Second, Alderman Wilson. Motion and a second. Any discussion of those minutes? And we'll go through the list again just to make sure we don't miss anyone. Alderman Ashauer? No discussion. Alderman Berry? No comment. Alderman Bevere? No comment. Alderman Davalos? No comment. Alderman Goodman? No comment. Alderman Krishal? No comment. Alderman Widener? No comment. And Alderman Wilson? No comment. Okay, well, we have to do it one more time again to vote on that, right? <laughs> All right, Emily, we're voting now on approving that uh, one set of minutes. Alderman Kreschel? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Widener? 
Alderman Ashmore. Aye. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Now the consent agenda for this evening as amended. Item 6B, accept Mayor Brummel's recommendation and pass resolution R2020-30, extending the duration of the March 16th, 2020 declaration of emergency until the adjournment of the next regular, special, or emergency meeting of the City Council. C, accept staff recommendation and pass resolution R2020-31 for the expenditure of motor fuel tax revenue in the amount of $307,871 during fiscal year 2021 for the maintenance of streets and highways by municipality as required under the Illinois Highway Code. D, accept staff recommendation and pass resolution R2020-32, waiving competitive bidding and approving a contract with Lane Christensen in the amount of $26,329 to abandon well number eight on Country Ridge Drive. E, accept the staff recommendation and approve resolution R2020-33, rejecting the bid to purchase city-owned surplus property adjacent to 28W444 Rogers Avenue. F, receive and file minutes of the Police Pension Board regular meeting, quarterly meeting, held on January 28th, 2020. G, received and filed minutes of the Bicyclist and Pedestrian Advisory Commission meeting held on March 10th, 2020. H, receive and filed minutes of the Bicyclist and Pedestrian Advisory Commission meeting held on April 14th, 2020. I, receive and file report of invoices paid up to May 13th, 2020 in the amount of $119,751.54. J, authorized expenditures for invoices due on or before June 1st, 2020, in the amount of $165,111.79. And K, receive and file report of master debit card expenditures for the month of April 2020, in the amount of $7,897.99. May I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve the agenda as presented by Mayor David Brummel. Second, second. Alderman Wilson. It's a motion and a second by Alderman Wilson. Thank you. And a roll call. Al Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Krischel? Aye. Thank you. The consent agenda as amended has been approved. We'll return right now to item 6A. Would someone like to make that motion? Uh, yes, Alderman Davalos. Um, I would like to make a motion to accept staff recommendation, waive second reading, and pass ordinance 02020-23. Amending Section 8-12-1 of the City Code regarding cash contributions in lieu of dedication of land for public use. Second, Alderman Barry. Okay, motion and a second discussion, and we'll do the list thing again and make sure that we get everyone. So we'll begin with Alderman Ashour. The uh, I pulled this off. I just don't want to make it easier for us to be able to confiscate Park District donations. I think they're better uh, equipped to handle these type of things and spend the money in a way that would be beneficial to the community than the council is. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Berry? No comment. Okay. Alderman Bevere? Yeah, I reflect the uh, same as Alderman Nash Hour, and uh, I'm not in favor of this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Davalos? Um, yeah, just one clarification. We're really just adding improvements to this. That's my first question. And second question is, from reading this, it sounds like the Park District is in favor of this so that they can then begin to make choices with the money that they're receiving that, that helps them better able to do what they want to do. Okay. Uh, Community and Economic Development uh, Director Ryan Menser, would you have an uh, answer for that, please? Sure. Thank you and good evening. Uh, the Park District 
executive director has reviewed the ordinance and has informed me he has no objection to the city's approval of the ordinance. Um, if it is approved, if it is approved, uh, it would be more consistent with how the park district has been using some of the funds that they have been um, receiving park donation funds. That is, they've been receiving from the city. Um, it is also consistent with the uh, um, proposed use of funds for city purposes as discussed during the process by which the city council ultimately reserved some of the developer park donation funds for city park trail and recreation improvement uh, costs in the, in the coming years. Th thank you for clarifying. Okay, very good. Alderman Goodman. Yeah, in my opinion, this is essentially a cleanup item. We're just correcting what's almost a scrivener's error. There is a difference in meaning here, but the meaning after the change will match what we're actually using the money for and what the park district is actually using the money for. So it seems like an obvious yes to me. Okay, thank you. Alderman Krishnal. Uh, nothing additional to add, thank you. Okay, Alderman Widener. Yes, um, I ju just wonder if we have a tight definition of uh, improvements. The word uh, Community Development Director Messer? No, we do not have a, uh, a specific definition of improvements that would have to be dealt with on a case by case basis. Um, and any, any city use of these funds for projects or, or improvements be something that would be ultimately presented to as part of a decision that the city council would need to make before those those funds would be uh, expended. You know, the park district obviously does not need to, to come before the city council to uh, get any type of approvals for how they use those funds. Uh, there is an intergovernmental agreement in place that uh, basically requires them to use them in accordance with um, legal requirements that apply, but they do not need any special approval from the city council on what type of land acquisition or improvements they would fund with those, those dollars. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you, Director Menser. I just have a quick comment that um, the definition of improvements can be far and wide. I guess when I think of improvements, I'm thinking of structural and physical improvements, which I would be in favor of. Um, and I think that's kind of, as we understand it today, what people are thinking about. But um, as far as programming, programming improvements and things like that, I'm not sure this statute uh, was intended to um, be dedicated to uh, improvements that would um, be relegated to specific programs. Um, so I guess I, I would like to clarify the the term improvements so that we were just talking about physical improvements to the land, which um, the I guess the um, the ordinance is dedicated to. In, in its original form was dedicated to providing land space as a city grew in size and population. So um, I just would feel better not augmenting specific programs, but um, improving land space um, is my feeling about it. And uh, further, I guess, you know, the city hasn't added a, a park in probably more than 20 years, any kind of parks, public park space. And I think in times like we're experiencing right now, we've really witnessed the importance of trails and open spaces for people to go to. So um, I would hope that at some point the city develop a land acquisition plan so that in the future is, as we grow in population, we also grow in opportunities for people to get outside and recreate. Um, as I think it, as things move along here, this, those spaces could become very overcrowded or they could be a great distance uh, for people to travel to. And it could be a, a barrier for 
nine and 10 year olds to cross busy streets to try to get to open spaces and, and parks and so forth if the city doesn't keep up buying park space as it grows in population. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Um, Alderman Wilson. Uh, just a couple of comments here. I can understand the concern about the future use of the monies that we're going to receive for the uh, park district programs. However, as long as we maintain with the city council the approval on any additions and uh, changes or whatever that we have, uh, I'm in favor of that. Keeping it within the city council's discretion as to how we move forward and we should look at all the options that may be available now and in the future and take those all under consideration about the circumstances at the future time. So I'm in favor of uh, just doing what we're planning to do, and I vote yes. Okay. Anyone want a second bite at the apple? Or can we go ahead with a vote? All right. Not hearing anyone. Emily, could I have a roll call, please? Alderman Barry. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Crishaw. Aye. Alderman Devere. Alderman Devere. Alderman Bevere? You, did you say Alderman Bevere? Yes. yes. Uh, nay. Okay, thank you. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Eschauer? Nay. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We will move on then to the regular agenda. Uh, could I have a motion for item 7A to begin the discussion? Uh, Alderman Davalos, I'd like to make a motion to accept staff recommendation and approve the temporary amendment to the hotel tax grant policy for the reimbursement of approved expenses for canceled or modified events. Second, Alderman Barry. Thank you. A motion and a second. We'll begin with a presentation by um, Assistant City Administrator Christina White. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so in your packets this evening is an amendment to our hotel tax grant policy. Um, as most of you are aware, the COVID-19 has caused many of our 2020 events to be either canceled or modified. Uh, we expect that may continue into the summer. Um, however, many of our groups end up starting the programs and contracting with talent or venues early on in the season and may have incurred or committed to expenses that they cannot now um, get out of. So TAC reviewed the recommended policy as well and we felt that it was important to have an avenue for those tax grant recipients to still get reimbursed for their revenues. Again, many of those groups rely heavily on hotel tax money in order to fund those events and do not have other revenue sources to cover those expenses. These are all expenses that would have been approved as part of the grant application process and all events and grantees that were originally approved by the council. The amendment to the policy just authorizes the Tourism and Arts Commission to review the request for reimbursement under certain parameters to justify whether those expenses had to have been incurred in order for them to have their program, even if the program had to be eventually canceled. So TAC would be able to review and approve those expenses before they get paid out. And those would all be expenses that were previously approved through the application process. So we're asking for the council to give TAC the authority to make those decisions as to whether or not those are approved expenses that uh, could not have been avoided even though the event had to be canceled or modified. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good. Thank you, Christina. We'll again go through the list if you have questions or comments for Christina or for this item. Alderman Ashauer? No questions. Thank you. Alderman Barry? No questions. Thank you. Alderman Bevere? Okay. 
Are you still with us, Alderman Bevere? There he is. No questions. Very good. Thank you. Alderman Davalos? No, no questions. Thank you. Alderman Goodman? No comment. Very good. Alderman Krishal? Uh, nothing for me. Alderman Widener? No questions. Thank you. And Alderman Wilson? No comment. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we'll do the roll call again vote at this point. So this is your chance to vote. Emily? Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Alderman Krishal? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Very good. Thank you. Motion carries. We'll move on to 7B then. Would someone like to make that motion, please? Alderman Wilson, I'd like to make a motion to accept staff recommendation and approve the temporary amendment to the hotel tax grant policy for reimbursement or approved expenses for or canceled or modified events. Uh, we're on 7B, Alderman. Okay, well, let me turn the page. <laughs> All right, you know, I'm here in the Winterland. Uh, okay, accept <laughs> the recommendation and extend the sick pay time benefit for part-time crossing guards due to school closures for the remainder of 2019-2020 school year for a total of approximately $3,500. Second. Second, Alderman Bevere. Second, Alderman Bevere. Thank you, Alderman. And uh, back to Assistant City Administrator White. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, on March 23rd, the City Council authorized the City Administrator to uh, provide up to 60 hours of paid time off to the part-time employees of the city that were directly impacted by COVID-19. Um, at that time, we did not know that the stay-at-home order and the school closure orders would continue on uh, until this point in time. So the amount of hours that were approved ended up not being enough time to cover the expense for the crossing guards specifically who cannot work due to school closures through the end of this school year, which for um, the CUSD group is June 3rd. For St. Irene's, that's June 2nd, would have been the last day of school. Um, staff is recommending that we extend that benefit to the part-time crossing guards to cover their pay for the remainder of the school year, uh, which is about now three weeks from now, and that total cost uh, is about $3,500, give or take. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We'll go back then to the Alderman, beginning with Alderman Ashauer. Question or comment? No comment. Thank you. Alderman Berry? No comment. Thank you, Alderman Bevere. No comment. Thank you, Alderman Davalos. No comment. Thank you, Alderman no Goodman. I'm glad we do this for our employees, Alderman Goodman. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Alderman Krishal. Uh, just to clarify, so for everyone else listening too, this is. Money that was already budgeted, it's already it was already set aside to be paid anyway. So this is just how how we're paying them, right? For clarification. That is correct. This is not additional funding. It is money that was already budgeted, and they would have been paid anyway if the schools were open and they were working. Okay. This is this is great. So um, thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Widener. I have no questions or comment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wilson. No comment. Very good. Thank you all. And we'll have the vote. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Krishal. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. 
Motion passes. Thank you. We'll move on then to item 7C, an informational update on the estimated effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the city finances. And we'll begin with the city administrator, John Coakley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll make a couple of quick comments and then our finance director will go over some of the information. Uh, you should be able to see it on your on your screen if you have a computer view. If you're on the phone only and don't have the view, just please turn to the back of your agenda packet material. We'll be talking about the same uh, tables and charts that are in the back of the packet under agenda item 7C. The, uh, well, as you all know, uh, there's a stay at home order. Many things have been closed down and that affects not only workers and business owners, but it also affects governmental bodies like the city. And the city has, uh, will be losing, is losing a lot of revenue because of course, if you can't collect the revenue, you can't pay it and remit it. There's no taxes due at that point. So what we had projected for this year's budget by and large for some of the city's revenue sources is falling uh, short. Our finance director has done a really good job of trying to estimate uh, as best he can at this point. This is all preliminary. Uh, I can't say that enough, although I was told to take out the 15th time I put it in the memo uh, because we don't want to overemphasize it. We have very little actual hard data at this point. There's just a few things that have been remitted to the city, but things again like sales taxes and all will not be coming in for several more months. So this is the best estimate using some models that were developed by other towns. Uh, we've primarily taken one from the village of Schaumburg, modified it to our uses. We're not Schaumburg. We've looked at things from other DuPage County communities as well, and we believe this is a, a good way to go about it. It will be adjusted as we go forward, as more data, data and details come in. Uh, not only did our finance director put all this together, I've reviewed it. Our senior staff has given input on it. We've also used the city's financial consultant, uh, David Clark, as you may remember, we brought on board to help us with some revenue projections, and we had him review it as well, just to get his feedback from another perspective. So knowing this is preliminary, this is the best estimates of things at this point, and you will see too, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of Kevin, but we're projecting not just where we are, or where we believe we were for March and April, but also looking ahead to May, all the way through October, and then just trying to ballpark what we'll see in the uh, final six months. Uh, last thing I will add there, and then we'll answer, let Kevin talk and then we'll answer questions. Uh, we're also using the uh, Governor Pritzker's uh, reopen Illinois phasing to try to project some of the revenue uh, losses, declines, increases, changes, if you will, so trying to estimate when the state will be reopened, when more people will be able to gather or go to restaurants and et cetera. So all those things have been taken together. And again, probably the 20th time, they're preliminary information because we don't have a lot of data and uh, let Kevin fill in the gaps and we'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you, John. Um, City Finance Director, Kevin Dahlstrom. Kevin? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. The first page is strictly the general fund loss. Um, as right as of right now, we are projecting a $1.936 million loss through the end of fiscal 2021. There is a portion of that that is a loss projected for the remainder of fiscal 20. Uh, that, that will be realized as the final accruals roll in for, for, from the state. There is approximately a three month lag on those, so we'll not, not see those for a little while. And then uh, that loss for f fiscal 20 is about uh, $466,000. Uh, we then also have proje projected a loss for f fiscal tw 21 through the end of the year of $1,469,000. That'll make a total loss over the two, 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 two years of $1,936,476. Those figures are presented to you on an accrual basis, which is how we started out. We wanted to be able to compare directly to budget. Uh, as we've talked through this, it's going to make more sense um, to everyone if we convert that to a cash basis, uh, which will be more when we realize them as opposed to when we accrue them. I don't want to get too into the weeds on accrual accounting, but it might make a little more sense if, if the dollars are looked at as to when they are received, not when they are earned. Um, 
the accrual way makes more sense to me because that's how we look at the books, but it will make more sense to everyone else to see it um, as to when we receive it. Uh, when we go on to page two of this, we begin to look at the capital maintenance and replacement fund. We're projecting ju just short of a $400,000 loss over the, the uh, remainder of 2020 and through the end of 2021 for that fund as well. We look there at the amusement tax and the local motor fuel tax. Uh, focused on those because those were the ones that we felt would have the most major impact from, from the COVID um, uh, restrictions. Uh, the other revenues are being reviewed as well to see if there's any impact, impact on the utility ta ta taxes for electric and natural gas, but we have not um, projected those at this point, point in time. The hotel tax fund is get, getting hit fairly hard at this point. We are projecting about a $400,000 loss in that fund uh, through the end of fiscal 21. Uh, the combined 400,000 would be just short of, one, of a half year of revenue in that fund. Um, that's a considerable hit for that fund at this point. Um, so we'll keep, keep, keep an eye on that as well. We do know that, that at least one hotel had been completely closed for a period of time. I do believe that they are now back open and, uh, and we'll see some remittance from them. I can say that uh, the one remittance we've received so far, uh, and they're not due yet, but for the month of April, uh, one hotel, uh, the revenue for them was down 89% from what it had been the prior, prior, prior year. So that's a significant loss and that's indicative of how um, we may see the, the other ones come um, as April was a full month of closure as opposed to a partial month in March. So all the all th those will, will be revised as we move, move ahead and get more actual data. Finally, we also um, looked at the state shared motor fuel tax fund uh, we are projecting a, a lot of loss there of a little over $105,000. The, the estimate there is based on some estimates we received from IML, who is a, go, a good uh, source for, for projecting uh, the state shared revenue at this point. Across all funds, the projected loss right now is a, a little over $2.8 million. And again, all that will be up data as we receive more current and up-to-date revenue. Um, at that point, we can entertain any questions you may have. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we'll go through the list again and give everybody an opportunity to uh, ask questions or make comments, beginning with Alderman Ashauer. No comment. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Barry. Uh, no uh, Alderman Bevere? No comment at this time. Thank you. Alderman Davalos? Um, yes, I, I have two questions. Um, on the last page, um, the page I guess we're looking at right now, uh, I can't see this because of my, anyway, um, the, at the very bottom, M. It talks about reduction all funds, and then it talks about loss all funds. Um, can, that, can you tell me what the reduction line is? Yes, the, the reduction line is just the to totals per year. If you look, the 637,000 is the yeah. loss for that fiscal year, and the 2.19 on the far right-hand side is, is the reduction for 21. The 2.8 is the combined total of those two figures. Okay, thank you. I had one other just thought as I was reading through this. I don't know how the um, the systems were developed or how how the um, how this is being calculated. But are we also taking into consideration um, sort of loss of expenses? That there's a lot of things we aren't spending um, anywhere from from funding or having public works do something with an event to everybody going out to lunch or paying for different things. I, I'm not saying it's a lot of money, but obviously we can't, we can't possibly if we're following the governor's um, 
plan here that we're spending all the money because some of it is is community things and for festivals and all kinds of things that aren't happening. So do, is there a subtraction in this or do you think that's taken into the the um, the model that they're using to calculate this or estimating? Uh, good question, Alderman. Um, City Administrator Coakley. Thank you. I'll start and Kevin can jump in if there's something else. Uh, Alderman, it is, this is, what you're seeing in those tables is just the revenues and just the revenues that are very elastic due to market conditions. As you can see, they're dramatically down. We don't have things like property taxes or some right. of them are, are far more stable. Uh, there's no expense information included here. We plan to bring that forward in the future. As you will recall, we've delayed a large portion of the capital program, capital equipment replacement. Now that's in the CMRP, but that would be reflected. Mm -hmm. um, there's many festivals we already know going at least through the 4th of July, we won't be having, so there will be less expenses. We won't have hotel payments, tax uh, money or tax grants sent out. We won't be paying the overtime for those kind of efforts for public works or police, et cetera. So you're correct, there will be savings. We can't reflect those yet. We can estimate some and project them going forward, and we can have more of that information probably in coming months. I don't know if I, I'm not going to promise it to you um, for the June 1st meeting, but we should be able to show more of that as we go forward. I would say, too, some of it should be eventually reported as we're showing some impacts on fund balance. I think we can adjust those, too, but those will again be projections. Okay. Thank that you. That's, that's great. Yes, that does help. Okay, very good. Thank you. Alderman Goodman. Yes, I have a few questions. Um, first of all, is there any adjustment or do you think that we'll be needing to make further adjustments for delays in collecting certain remittances? Um, I know that uh, Administrator Coakley just talked about how property tax is more stable, but we know the county is offering to waive late fees on property tax and we may have late remittances as a result of that and the state uh, for instance has also offered late um, sales tax collection i think they they offered a one-time three-month delay for sales tax payments by retailers and restaurants i forget if it was broader than that but um i, I heard this probably a month or two ago it may have changed since then but i just wonder what sort of um allowance you've put in here for delays. Okay, uh, Administrator Coakley, or do you want the- I was gonna suggest maybe the finance director can answer that first. Kevin? Then... So, thank you, Mayor. We have not included any delays in remittances at this point. As I mentioned at the outset of this, this has been presented on the accrual basis. So when we make the conversion to the cash basis, that is where we would see um, any refl reflective ad 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 adjustments that we make for the timing of when things are actually received. So that would be the goal of converting it to that cash basis to provide a little more uh, cl clear look as to when we receive it as opposed to what we're expecting to receive in the long term. Thank you, Kevin. Alderman? Yeah, Alderman Goodman again. Um, my next question has to do with investment income. Um, my understanding is that before we were getting, you know, perhaps 1%, and I see that you've estimated a loss of 50% of that, but I think investment income right now should probably be closer to 0.1%, so 50% may not be enough of a drop for that. I know it's not a large amount of money, however, but that's just my perspective on that, and my question as to why you are only estimating 50%. Okay. Um... Definitely Kevin. Kevin, definitely this is for you. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with you a little bit. We do. That was our initial per projection, and as we as we start 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 to see what actually happens to our inv investments and our in and our uh, investment income uh, related to those, we will be ad ad adjusting that downward. That came from the initial estimate we used when when we would assume that we would ju just use. 50%, and I agree that that does need to be adjusted, and we will be adjusting that going forward again Again, when we reflect more of a cash basis um, of what we receive. Thank you, Gavin. Back to you, Alderman. Thank you. Um, I know 
when I say investment income, most people probably think about the police pension fund, but that is not part of this. And that's not one of um, the estimates that we have in these documents. So just to be clear, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I know that that is going to be one of the biggest impacts that we see as a result of, of the pandemic, but it's very hard to predict that. So I don't think there's any point in involving that in the conversation. Okay, so my, my last question has to do with um, whether there's been any news about permanent business closures in the community that we need to take into consideration when estimating revenue losses. I've heard of some local restaurants of longstanding closing, like Cozy Mel's and Wheaton. I haven't specifically heard about any closures in Warrenville. I know it's not just restaurants that might have closed and not reopened yet. We may not know this yet, but I'm just wondering if staff has any updates. Okay, uh, City Administrator Coakley. Thank you. I'll start, and then if and if any of our senior staff knows something additional, they can chime in. Uh, I have not been notified of any businesses, any business closures related to this pandemic since I believe it would be the beginning of March. Now, just prior to that, sometime in the early winter months, California Pizza Kitchen announced it was closing and did close abruptly, but that was prior to this whole event. Uh, yes, Chewy's, uh, Chewy's fan here. Uh, did, that was in the fall. So we've had a couple, but they aren't directly related to your question. Uh, since March, at least, I'll make the cutoff date or even February. So we haven't heard any. We do suspect that that may well happen because some businesses clearly were, were uh, working on very thin margins already and now being closed for two, three months is not going to uh, help them out. But officially, I have not heard any. I don't know if, if Ron or Kevin have any Ryan Menser or Kevin Dahlstrand have any other insights? They have business licenses and other connections. Director Menser? Um, I have not heard that there's any specific locations in Warrenville that are planning to close as a result of COVID-19. Uh, that being said, there are a couple of uh, national chains that do have restaurants in Warrenville that I am aware um, we're struggling before this, uh, the whole pandemic, and I'm sure um, you know the downturn has has even hurt them more. So there's a possibility that um, Red Robin and uh, the brewery down in, in, the, in the, by the theater, um, Rock Bottom, Rock Bottom, uh, may close because they're having issues nationally before they were having issues nationally before. Um, COVID and the pandemic. Thank you, Director. Director uh, um, Dahlstrand, anything to add? I can't add a lot to that. Uh, those are the same, same ones I've heard. We, not, we have not heard anything concrete. Um, Rock Bottom um, has been having issues as a co corporate entity, but I do know that they renewed their liquor license. Um, so I think that's a somewhat of a good sign, although it, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be, be there indefinitely. So uh, we have not heard anything else on anyone else that we know of is going to close right now. Thank you, Director. Uh, oh, uh, back to City Administrator Coakley. Thank you. Um, I, as, as I'm listening to the comments here, I would note, too, uh, there were a couple of restaurants or uh, businesses, I should say, that are, look like they're about to open. There's the one there's a new Mexican restaurant up by uh, the Family Foods area by Ace Hardware uh, that has uh, opening soon sign up. Uh, I can't remember the El Toro Negro, I think. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, don't make me do that Spanish again. <laughs> and uh, uh, the other is, of course, the uh, Eva Lat um, wine shop down the street. Now, those are probably not going to be on the same scale as the ones that were just mentioned, but there certainly are some business activity that seems to still be going on. So there's some there's some positive signs and all the negativity here too. Alderman? <clears throat> yeah, that does it for me. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Kushnell, anything? Uh, no, I, I mean, I appreciate the, the work to, to get these numbers. Obviously, it's something we're all thinking about and um, it affects everything that we do here in the city. So um, it's good to have kind of a optimistic look on putting numbers on paper and, and taking a look at it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Widener. Alderman Widener, uh, are you there? I apologize. I was having trouble with my mic. Um, this is very good. I guess I just, 
I want to know a little bit more about Schomburg's formula on putting all this together. Is this like a total look at the pandemic running for a full year and no return to normal? Or is this looking at the pandemic running for three or four months and then things getting back on their feet? Or it's like, I, I guess I, I'm unsure of how these numbers were all um, arrived at. Good evening, Mr. Mayor Coakley. Thank you. I'm thinking Kevin will probably have some follow up, but uh, Alderman, we started with the Schomburg model now. When that first came out, and it, it's not all that different from a lot of towns, but it was one of the earlier ones that came out. It was about a month and a half ago, maybe. And at that time, the uh, view was everything is knocked way down for the first few months, and then during the summer months, started to come up very quickly. And by the fall, September, October, everything was back at 90%. That is not the case we're showing. That's not the case that anyone, even that village, is expecting anymore. Um, so I say in the beginning, we based it on that model. It's something that we have customized to our circumstance. They're very heavily sales tax oriented with a large mall and huge uh, shopping far beyond what we will ever have. So we had to customize it and adjust to what elastic revenues that we have to look at and it has all been adjusted. I know all the other towns around us, including Schomburg, have adjusted as well. Based on the current circumstances and as of May, and looking at the governor's uh, reopening point plan phases and the probability of when things will open. So it was only based on that, but it is not, uh, it's not what we, I, I wish it was still uh, the reality of being back to normal by uh, September, but that's not what we're showing and not what we believe will happen. Follow up, Alderman? And, th and that's not what these numbers indicate. These numbers are indicating the more dire situation. Is that what you're saying, um, Mr. Coakley? Yes, it's it's reflecting a more dire situation and more what we believe is more realistic for this time now. Yes. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. I guess. <laughs> That wasn't my thumb. That was not my sump pump. Um, <laughs> wow. Margarita. Margarita maker, yeah. Wait, <laughs> pump pump keeps me awake, but it's much quieter than that, really. Um, that was my thumb like pump. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm looking forward to more extended conversations about what our strategy uh, is going to be moving forward with these consequences and what the availability, I know it's early early yet to predict and what, you know, what the availability of federal funds or state are going to be to, you know, keep us rolling along and what we might do as a city to, you know, maintain the, the spirit of the community, but at the same time cut costs where we can. And I don't know when that conversation will take place, but I, I really think that there's going to be some tough decisions uh, that will need to be reached, um, counting the granules of salt that we put on the roads this winter and uh, which which special events uh, we put forward and which ones maybe we we forego. But in the interest of the community, you're going to want to have some special events. And then also, you know, there might be some new avenues, like just what we're talking about with small businesses. I think there needs to be more outreach as we get you know, to a healthier state here where we'll want to do what we can to and all we can to buoy up the the small businesses and get them on their feet again because they are, you know, suffering right now. And those are just a couple off the cuff comments. I don't have any other further questions about the numbers and I appreciate staff, you know, looking and uh, researching a model and devising their own and putting these together. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Wilson? Just a couple of comments. I thank you for putting together what you have to, and what you have to work with. It's not very rosy, but by the same token, it's an estimate of where we might go and under circumstances that we have no idea what they're actually going to be. But you have to start somewhere and you have to be very careful about what you're doing with what you have and what you can anticipate. So we can be all rosy and hope that things are going to work out the way we would like them to work out.
but, but still we have to make those cuts where we have to do it. And we have to, as a city council, we have to be very careful about the additional expenditures of any kind of funds for the rest of this year that, uh, that we don't know what the future will bring. Again, I'm hoping for the best. We look forward to it. But by the same token, we have to sharpen the pencil and we see those opp opportunities to reload, uh, reduce some of the expenditures. I don't know where they're going to come from, but we do have to look very closely for it. It does not look like we're going to get much help from the state and we can put that aside and just hope for better conditions and a brighter day tomorrow. And on that, no more, no other comment. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, anyone with uh, an additional comment that you would like to make before we move on? All right, we will move uh, quickly then to the end because we have nothing under unfinished business. We have no new business listed. We have no need for a closed session. So all we really need at this point is a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn, Alderman Wilson. Second, Alderman Ashar. Very good, and we'll do this on a vice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition, the motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you all for attending this evening and thank everyone who's uh, paid attention to what we're doing. Uh, and we'll see you the next time around. Thank you, Mayor. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.